I did a video a few years ago about a boat that I put a floor in and I fiberglass it in. Uh, I think I may have made mention that I was putting a different engine in. I don't quite remember the videos, but I get a ton of emails from all kinds of people asking, how'd the boat turn out? Where are we at? Long story short, things changed in my life a little bit, and so I had to park the boat aside uh, and didn't really have a place to work on it for a while. And here the last few months, I pulled it back in the garage and I started working on it again. So I wanted to point out a few things I've done just to kind of cure the curiosity out there. Um, I did go ahead and make sure all the gauges worked. Some of them didn't. I replaced the ones that did not. I kind of had some problems finding gauges that matched just because these were kind of old. I didn't want to replace them all just because gauges cost a lot of money if you buy good ones. So there's just kind of some piecemeal gauges in there. Um, I did take out the hour meter and replace it with a depth uh, finder. It also gives me water temperature because I like to fish, so sometimes it's kind of nice to know. It gives air temperature too. I can tell when it's hot, but it came with the gauge. So those all work. Everything is good there. I have everything completely wired in. The dash is ready to rock and roll. I replaced the switch with an accessory position. The old one did not have an accessory position. That was pretty common for boats of this era. Uh, there is a switch panel that has to go in here. I have not wired it up yet, but all of these wires are labeled and ready to go. Um, if we look into the back of the boat, the engine is in. It is a 302 in a 16-foot boat. It's a very large engine for this boat. That being said, they did make a similar boat of the same size with the 305, so the boat should be able to handle it without any problem. It does not weigh much more than the engine that was in here. The engine that was in here was a straight six, so I think we're you know like a hundred and some pounds difference on this, so it should be okay. I did rewire the uh, the solenoids. Uh, that pick and layer the engine. It was a one solenoid configuration. Uh, I used some generic Ford solenoids on this and just kind of wired them up with a double double solenoid setting. I think it's more reliable. It used to be when you were pressing the button down, you were basically hot wiring the motor. You were sending straight power to the motor without going through a solenoid. Uh, that caused problems down the road with some boats. So I just like playing it safe. I, I pulled out all the solenoids and, and did this configuration. Uh, it also means I replaced some switches. So let's go over here to the switch. I'll be using this for my up and down trim. It's just a switch I found on eBay. Um, it was a three button configuration and that meant that uh, you had to hold the top two buttons to bring it all the way out of the water. I am smart enough to watch my meter on the dash so I just went with a simple two two position switch uh, that'll bring it up and down and uh, I will try not to make it cavitate. Uh, as far as the engine, there has been some changes and upgrades to it as well. Uh, I think this engine is a 70, 1974. Uh, I changed out the distributor with a, uh, a one-wire HEI. I just think they're more reliable. I like them better. I uh, also changed out the alternator with something a little more current. Uh, so this engine runs great. It was rebuilt. It has basically zero hours on it after the rebuilt, so I'm kind of excited there. On the bow, I was actually able to fit a trolling motor without any modifications at all. I was excited about that. I just had to drill some holes in the front. Uh, I did have a problem reaching underneath and getting to the hole, so I have put in a access panel. Now, before you say that's a horrible idea, uh, the panel I plan on putting back in here actually is a six inch access panel with a sack underneath it. They're used in kayaks. And I thought, you know what, this, this actual unit is remote control. It would be nice to be able to drop the remote control down in that sack as well and then close the, close the hatch back up. So a little bit of an upgrade there. As far as the fiberglass goes, I'm going to have to spend some time sanding it down and uh, treating it and making it look all good again. Uh, I've seen some of these Hammonds. People have completely repainted and they look really sharp, so I imagine that's what I'm going to end up doing. There's too much of it is, is far gone to try to restore this uh, the way it was, but we can still make it look really good. So as for the lower unit, it's uh, pretty much 100% stock. I didn't do any modifications. Uh, I did put new uh, sensors on. In fact, I have to bolt them up. I haven't done that yet uh, for the trim and tilt. Um, I've had some issues where there was like uh, literally 20 times more holes than there should have been in this area from where people over the years have rebolted the sensors on. So I did a little fiberglass work back here and I just kind of shot it with some Bondo or not Bondo. I shot it with some primer and then I sprayed over the top of that with a clear coat just temporarily so I can use this boat. When I go back and rework the body and make it look nice, I'll, I'll clean all this up. But at least it's sealed now. There's only enough holes for the sensors and we're ready to rock and roll there. I also wanted to make mention that I upgraded all of the lights in the dash to LEDs. 
Um, and you can see one of them's got a green tint instead of a red tint. But hey, you get what you get when you're when you're eBay shopping. And you're trying to be cheap. Uh, like I said, gauges are really expensive, and to do this on the cheap, I just kind of grabbed what I could grab. Also, want to make mention that eventually a stereo is going to go in here. I'm going to put one of those round digital stereos in this glove box, but I also want to put a USB type charger, mainly because the remote to my uh, trolling motor is a USB style charger. So if I can put an onboard USB charger and plug that thing in and let it charge on a lake, that will be outstanding. Uh, the other thing that I have ordered is some accent lights. Uh, what Hammond had done before was the control panel set down here and there was red lights up above it. I like that red light look. I think it's easier on your eyes at night. So I ordered red lights for above the control panel. And then as courtesy lights for the rest of the boat, I ordered some clear LEDs. So that should kind of top that off as well. Another issue I had was up here in the front was the navigation lights and it pretty much set right where I needed to put my trolling motor mount. So I have removed this. Uh, I was going to do some type of pole light navigation mount, but then when I was online I found these surface mount nav lights. So they're red and green and they just surface mount right here in the front of the bow. So a lot of people kind of forget that their trolling motor blocks their light. Technically that's illegal. You should not do that. You should make sure that you can see the, the lights on each side of the boat clearly. One last thing that I've got to take care of is the doghouse cover. So originally this had a doghouse cover that fit an inline six. This engine is so wide that the doghouse cover never even had a chance. Uh, so I tossed it. I'll have to rebuild a new one. Uh, original boat designs had these jump seats that were tucked over here in the corners, but I pretty much had to move all of the equipment out from in the back and move stuff to the sides, like the battery and uh, this unit over here for the for the trim and tilt. Uh, so because of that, I'm not going to be able to put jump seats in here. If I did, I would have to start them way up here, and then that would just make the inside of this boat even smaller. It's only a 16-foot boat. It needs all the help it can get. So essentially what I think I'm going to do is actually put a fishing platform back here. I like to fish and I used to fish standing off this doghouse. So I think if I put a nice platform across the back, uh, that would be great. And then I would incorporate steps down on the side. So I find the older I get and the worse my knees are, uh, that uh, steps are kind of nice. So maybe uh, maybe I'll be able to incorporate those in there. We'll see. Uh, and then I gotta get seats and finish the interior, but that's just pretty minor compared to what I've had to do. So that's kind of a rundown of what's going on. I have not uh, dropped the project. I will continue uh, and I'll make sure I keep you guys updated and posted. Um, you know, again, I'm trying to answer some questions because a lot of people keep asking me where you at with the project. Uh, well, here's where I'm at. Um, what I also will do is any uh, pieces and parts that I use, I'll put a link in the description down below uh, so you can find those if you're interested in. I did do a video, you guys might have noticed, on the sending unit down here in the gas tank. I found a really cool magnetic sending unit without any moving parts, so you'll want to check that video out and take a look at it as well. Uh, I'll keep you all posted uh, as I progress on this uh, perpetual project as I'm calling it now. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll update the videos and, and if you guys have any uh, options or opinions or ideas uh, that you think might help this build, go ahead and put it in the description below. I love reading your comments and uh, if you like doing uh, you know, do-it-yourself type work, please like and subscribe to my videos.